Welcome and welcome back to Really Legal. I'm attorney Ethan Behrman. Trump trial day one opening statements. Pecker raised his hand and Pecker cackled. I'll give you the good, the bad, and what's next. So today was the day the jury actually sat down, received instructions from Judge Mershon. The prosecutor, the defense, gave their opening statements and the first witness was called. It was a short day today here on Monday, April 22nd, 2024. And I'll explain that in just another moment as well. But interestingly enough, when we talk about the jury here, is the judge uh, issued basic instructions that said, look, you can take notes. But the one thing that he allowed that I think is very interesting, that is not usual, it doesn't mean that it's rare, but it's uncommon, I would suggest, is that when they deliberate at the end of the trial, they are allowed to ask the court reporter to read back the transcript. Now, many years ago, before I ever even went to law school, I served on a jury in a kidnapping, torture, murder trial, and we were able to take notes. And just as an example, when we wanted to clarify something that had happened in a, you know, obviously it didn't happen in one day, the trial, the judge said, absolutely not. You have to just rely on your notes. So that is an exception that jurors can ask for the transcript to be read back later. But in the opening statements today, this is exactly what you would expect. The prosecution comes in, says, here's what we're going to prove to you and why you're going to find Donald J. Trump guilty of 34 felony counts here. And we're going to present that to you. And we're going to have all these witnesses. And yeah, you're going to hear something about Michael Cohen. But I mean, tell you what, there's going to be corroborating evidence. And there's going to be enough that you're going to hear that this is going to work out. Well, defense comes in and says, here's what they're going to try and say. And here's why they're wrong. And my client's innocent. And he was wonderful. He did nothing wrong. And this whole thing they didn't get to say was a witch hunt. They don't get to say that in court. Another thing that's really interesting that I, I really appreciate that Judge Mershon did because of the sensitivity of this proceeding is when, and this was instructed to prosecution and defense today, when they have an objection, normally I'd say something like, objection, you know, lax foundation, misleading, your honor, he said, blah, 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 whatever it is. Judge Mershon said, and I, I just think this is great, said, you're only allowed to say objection, nothing more. You don't get to do what are called speaking objections, what I was just saying, and they, they yell out why they're wrong or they're right or whatever it is. Everything's going to be done up at the judge. Objection, they're going to have to approach the bench. This judge is going out of his way, and I think it's really wonderful. I think it's positive for the legitimacy of the proceedings, but also for it to stand up to scrutiny on appeal. So the judge is doing a very good job making sure to, to walk a very narrow line to make sure that on appeal, should Trump be found guilty, that the proceedings themselves are not going to be in question. Um, I think that's very, very smart. So let's get to our first witness of the day. Oh, I didn't mention, why are we ending early today? We ended early today uh, because one of the jurors had a previously scheduled dental appointment. So they were supposed to go until 2.30 p.m. today, Eastern time. They ended at noon. It was a very short day. So they never even finished with the first witness, David Pecker, who used to run and own the National Enquirer. He's a central figure in this case. So Pecker raised his hand, was sworn in. Apparently there was something that was said in court that made him cackle. So Pecker cackled as well, according to the Washington Post reporting. And, but, but here's the key. So it starts with, oh yeah, we, we are a pay for play publication, meaning we'll pay 10 grand for a story. Regular media does not do that. So if the Washington Post calls you about a story, you don't say to them, hey, pay me 10 grand or I won't talk to you. They, they just won't talk to you because they don't pay for that. National Enquirer, that was their business model. And anything over $10,000, according to, to David Packer's testimony today, it required his approval. So the first one was the doorman that alleged 
that Donald Trump had an out of wedlock child with somebody else. They paid for that and they killed it. Called a catch and kill is what this guy did for Trump. And we haven't gotten to that part of the testimony yet. But he did catch and kill. He bought the doorman story. He never published it. McDougal, the Playboy playmate who allegedly also had sex with Donald Trump and was paid $150,000, buy the story, kill it. Stormy Daniels, buy the story, kill it. What I'm looking for is where this goes next with David Pecker. So, so let's talk about what, what's the good and the bad and what's next in all of this. The good is the, the trial's underway. David Pecker is not a defense witness. He's a prosecution witness. He has tons of inside information of what Trump was thinking, what Trump was saying to other people like himself. He was part of a essentially a conspiracy to catch and kill stories that would be negative about Donald Trump leading up to the 2016 election. So the good is this is a very strong prosecution witness. And, and because of certain questions that may come about with Michael Cohen, the key is David Packer's corroborating evidence. So let me do give one more good thing and what I'm looking, well, I'll share that in what's next. So the, what's, what's the bad? Right now, I don't see a lot bad. Uh, it's the same story, which is, you know, to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. I think the falsification of business records seems fairly straightforward. The bigger issue is with the intent to interfere with the election. That's a higher hurdle. Uh, I still think that is absolutely doable by the DA's team, but it's a challenge. What's next? So I'm looking forward to David Packer taking the stand again tomorrow. And one of the key questions that I expect to hear from the prosecution is the Washington Post had reported way back that in 2015, Michael Cohen, Donald Trump, and David Packer had a meeting to discuss how this was going to work. So tomorrow's testimony on Tuesday, I look forward to the prosecution asking David Packer about that meeting. So even if the defense impeaches, that's the term for undermining the witness, impeaches Michael Cohen, that corroborating evidence from David Packer would overcome the impeachment and the question and makes Cohen's testimony valid, which improves, restores his testimony in the eyes of the jury. I think this is just going to be a wild week, several weeks here with the criminal trial of Donald Trump. Give me your comments below. What did you think about today's proceedings? I, I really love hearing from you. I mean that. Thank you. Click the like button, smash that subscribe button. Please remember, really important that you share this video with other people. Don't keep it to yourself. Share it with others. And I look forward to talking to you tomorrow. This is Really Legal on the Really American Network. I'm attorney Ethan Behrman.